CataractCoach.com. Small eye, shallow anterior chamber, high degree of hyperopia, tough case. So let me show you how I approach it. Now, you can see we've made a paracentesis. Those marks on the cornea right above the paracentesis, that indicates the steep axis of astigmatism for this patient. It's a very tiny eye, and this patient has a high degree of hyperopia. We're making the phaco incision about 90 degrees away from that steep axis, and this slightly wider phaco incision is being taken into account, this is a 275 incision, for the calculations for toricity for this patient. You know, a small corneal diameter like this, we're not really sure how an LRI is going to work, so I'd rather do, in this case, a toric version of a monofocal lens. Now, this is a very sweet patient who still emails me on a regular basis thanking me more than a year after the surgery for the brand new vision. This patient's life was completely transformed. That's the beauty of cataract surgery. We're getting our rexus done here. You can see I'm being very meticulous and precise. I want that exact five to five and a half millimeter rexus. Look at that measured five on the dot, beautifully round, nicely centered. It looks great. Now, in a case like this where the AC is shallow, no, we're not going to try to prolapse the nucleus out of the bag. It's too big. It's too chunky. Not enough room. What we're going to do, instead, we're going to chop this thing in the bag. There's a little hydro delineation. You see the golden ring. And now it spins very nicely. And we're going to do our FACO settings here, which are going to be chop mode. So we'll have a relatively high vacuum to hold the nucleus. High flow, so things happen in an efficient manner. And now FACO probe going in, bevel down. And then buzzing with a phaco probe, chopper going in, splitting that nucleus. There it is, very nicely done. And now the first half can be brought up and emulsified. Luckily, it's not too dense of a cataract. Pretty much a routine case for us. And emulsifying that nice and easy using some phaco power modulations such as burst or pulse mode to really minimize the amount of energy placed in the eye. Second half comes up again. Nicely done, using that chopper to keep that piece in front of the phaco tip and emulsify it. And you can see just a bare minimum amount of phaco energy is needed, and even a small degree of fluids going through the eye here. So we can do these cases with very little fluid running through the anterior chamber. Last piece is coming up, chopper in that safe position just to be sure, and then that looks great. Now we'll clean it up. In this patient, we're going to put in a 29 diopter IOL, and that's a pretty strong power, but... Putting this 29 diopter lens is going to give the patient the visual range that we desire. In this patient, what we decided to do was we decided to put in monofocal lenses. And what we did was a Technus monofocal, that's the model number ZC Boo, in the dominant eye aiming for Plano or sharpest distance vision. And then this is the near eye where we're aiming for a little bit of a myopic target, about a minus one, but using the eye hands lens, which gives just a pinch more than a standard monofocal lens. Now, we've made videos about this before, and eye hands is a really good lens. It's just that it's not an extended depth of focus lens. It is a good monofocal lens that has a little bit of a bump in the range, and that's very helpful here in this eye that's aimed for a myopic target. So there you go, nice clean capsule bag. That looks beautiful. Filling in the capsule bag now with our cohesive viscoelastic. That looks great. Going in, nice good fill. And we'll get our eye well delivered. Now, part of the reason we want to have a slightly larger incision, why do I want the 2.75 incision? Well, look, there's that lens, 29 diopters, DIU 150, so torque version of the eye hands. And the reason is this is a very thick lens. 29 diopters is about 50% thicker than our average 20 diopter lens for your average patient. So you do need a slightly bigger incision. Not much, just slightly. It's like a fraction of a millimeter, right? But you need that in order to get the lens in and keep uh, the lens in a very good shape. You don't want to have a crack or deformity or crease in the lens just because you try to shove it in through a too, too small of an incision. Now the lens is in the bag. IA probe behind it, get all that viscoelastic out. We want this lens to be preci precisely positioned in the capsule bag. There it is. And now we'll clean up here, clean that viscoelastic out of the anterior segment as well. A little um, capsule polishing going there, cleaning that undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. I want this to be pristine. I really take pride in the work that I do, and I really want to give every patient my absolute best here. So now we'll get that lens rotated. And you can see that's a perfect 5 millimeter capsule rectus overlapping that optic very precisely, getting this lens rotated exactly. And again, 
We have three dots on the cornea marking that steep meridian. We line up the marks on that torque eye well. Look at the Purkinje images. We account for parallax, get that lined up beautifully, and you'll see this will be a fantastic outcome. This patient achieved the literal ideal outcome. The dominant eye was plano or sharpest distance vision, 20-20 vision. This eye, the eye that was set for a little bit of myopia for the near vision, ended up, again, spot on target. So here at the very end, going to just adjust the lens position barely, and now look, it is precisely lined. Seal up that incision, let's call this a day. And again, this is such a sweet patient, and I'm so appreciative to have patients like this in my practice. And it's an honor to be able to change this patient's life forever. Take this patient from a high degree of hyperopia to truly amazing vision. What a blessing.